One of the nice features of Fiddler is the ability to use the composer to actually modify requests or responses to see how they would impact how a page or site behaves. Really the composer feature is how Fiddler got its name, the ability to fiddle with your requests and responses. You can create these manually, so you can actually go through the composer and build up a complete request by hand, but it's really a lot easier to make a request to the server, then drag it to the composer and modify it as desired to see what kind of impact that would have. Some of the things that you can change or you may want to use this feature for is to see how the server would react differently and send you different content based on different user agents. So in the case where I want to know if it would send something back differently if I were Google or some other browser, I can change the user agent and see how that would behave. It's also very useful for security testing, so I'm going to show you an example of how you can test a site and make modifications and see how to subvert some server side checks. We'll look at how you can change which language is requested so if you have a multilingual website you can see the response coming back in a different language than what your original request was made in. And we'll also see how you can change the header to say that you don't want to have compression and see that the content would not be compressed. Let's take a look at how we can use the Composer feature in Fiddler to make re changes to requests that would otherwise go to the server. So you can see the Composer tab. It does allow me to just freeform type. I can choose what type of request method I want, the URL, etc. But it's much easier to make a request and just make modifications. So let's look at the, I've got a web form page as an example that uses a range validator. So it's got a text box and it's trying to enforce that the value is between 1 and 10. So if you're familiar with the range validators, it's going to create the client-side JavaScript for you to validate that the value is between those two settings. So let's pull this up. We'll test it out first. If I hit 1, that will submit just fine. If I were to try to do 0, we'll see the client-side validation kicked in and it says that that's not okay. If I were to go back to Fiddler, I'll see the request that went up to the server. I can actually click that and drag it into Composer, and we'll see that it changes that that was a post to that particular file. And if I look below, I can see the values that were sent up to the server. So if I'm concerned about will my server react correctly if somebody tried to cheat on the client, I can actually look and say, well, I'm going to change the text box 1 to have a different value. I'm going to say that I'm going to submit 0. So in this case, the validators are supposed to emit client-side JavaScript, but they also work on the server. So I would hope that this is going to be enforced on the server, and I'm just checking to see if that will actually occur. So I make the modification I want to the request body and I will re-execute that request. If I go back and look at what the response looks like via the inspectors, we'll see that it said the value is zero, which isn't what I expected. I expected it instead to say that there was an issue with that. If we go back and look at the code, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but in the case of web forms, while you're in page load on the server, the validation controls have still not fired if I want to do this properly, I actually have to call page.validate and then say if page is valid, then go ahead and access. So by doing this sort of testing, I was able to see that when people circumvented my client-side JavaScript and just posted to the server using a tool like Fiddler or other techniques, they would be able to actually abuse my web page and get past the security that I had in place to stop them from entering that. So it's kind of surprising, it's kind of funny, I follow Eric Lawrence on Twitter. He said there's actually a lot of people that will send to him and ask, how do, you, how do I cheat in this game? How do I use Fiddler to do this? I'm obviously not trying to show you how to do nefarious things with Fiddler. The idea is that it is useful for you to do security testing. It would be more difficult to simulate this, but it's very easy to use the Composer feature and make all sorts of modifications to either the request as it went up to the server 
or the response as it comes back. As another example of a good use for the composer feature, we'll look at a web page that is set up uh, to be bilingual. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the actual ASP.NET techniques involved with creating a bilingual or multilingual website. But the idea is the page refers to resource files to pull out the literal text. So if we were to look at this page by default in IE, it says hello world. So if we look at the resource files, here's my default resource file and that literal intro message just says hello world. I can create various languages for these resource files. So in this case I said I wanted to have a Spanish version which in this case would say hola mundo and if we were to go back into Fiddler we can see the original request that was made when I drag that over to the composer we will see that here is the part that's important so as the browser is sending to the server it says the languages that I'm willing to accept in this case is US English we'll change that to Spanish and re-execute the request to the server now I can click go back to the inspectors look at the raw response and see that now I get the Spanish version of the page instead of the English version of the page so again, it's just a nice use of the composer to make slight modifications to the request that was made to the server to see how it would react and what sort of content would come back that was different than before. It's a very easy way to do that sort of testing, uh, taking advantage of Fiddler.